We have all heard the maxim that money can buy the best bed, but not sleep, which means that a good night's sleep is priceless. In our very own lives, each and every one of us can vouch for those mornings when we have woken up after a night of unblemished sleep and felt a sense of peace and accomplishment. Likewise, we have all had those nights of disturbed or lack of or no sleep, leading to a groggy morning and a groggy day. Hi, and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to delve into something that we do for a third of our lives and yet take for granted, sleep. Let's see how we can apply some simple tweaks and hacks to sleep better. In spite of all the personal experience and scientific proof that we have on the importance of sound sleep, for many of us, quality sound sleep is becoming a casualty in today's quote-unquote modern world. Although it is nature's way of providing us rest and rejuvenation, and it's available to us in abundance, is it not strange that we have come to a stage where there is actually something called a scarce commodity in many of our lives, so much so that sleep deprivation has actually reached pandemic proportions? While this may sound crazy, it's actually not when you consider how rampant sleep deprivation actually is, across borders especially so in the developed world. While late nights, binge drinking, and parties are some of the most common reasons amongst younger people for not getting the sleep that they need, and this is something that had held true even of earlier generations, the reasons for losing out on sleep are even more across different age groups. Technology, though originally intended to simplify and de-stress our lives, has in some cases proved itself to be the nemesis of our peace of mind and sleep. Emails and messages on smartphones mean that workers tend to be available for longer hours and work, therefore, may not necessarily remain a thing of working hours. This is particularly exemplified in many Asian work cultures like China and Japan. China has a notorious but unofficial 996 work culture, which means working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. Imagine working 9 to 9 six and sleeping well every night. Good luck with that. Sleep in Japanese culture is an even more interesting phenomenon. On that note, let us learn some Japanese. Welcome to Japanese 101. Yonto Goraku Sleep 4 hours, pass. Sleep 5 hours, fail is an adage that Japanese students preparing for exams are encouraged to live by. Inamori The phenomenon of drifting off to sleep in a public place, sadly common in Japan and the most interesting one that you probably might even have heard of. Karoshi, death from overwork due to, wait for it, sleep deprivation. Now that ends our class on Japanese 101 on a rather macabre note. So the point here is that sacrificing sleep and being sleep deprived is actually institutionalized in some cultures such as in Japan. And then, of course, there is the availability of around-the-clock entertainment thanks to robust internet connectivity and smartphones, which means lots and lots of screen time, lots and lots of blue light hitting the eyes, and that means our sleep circadian rhythms just go out the window. Looking westwards, as per a 2020 study titled Sleep and Sleep Disorders conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, nearly one in three Americans are not getting the sleep that they need. Globally, the metric is about 45% of the population. Needless to say, this can become the cause of a plethora of chronic health troubles like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, anxiety, depression… Phew! And mind you, this isn't just a bad thing for the people who aren't sleeping, it affects all of us. As per a study in 2017 on the economic costs of insufficient sleep, the losses to the economy are estimated at about $608 billion across five countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's about $400 billion for the United States alone and $60 billion for Germany. A similarly titled study conducted in Australia in the year 2006 had pegged the direct and indirect costs of sleep disorders at about 1% of the country's gross domestic product. Oh, and Japan's sleep debt, by the way, is estimated at about 15 trillion Japanese yen, or about 1.4 trillion US dollars. A study on workplace productivity loss in the year 2010 attempted to put a number on the loss of working hours due to absence from work caused by loss of sleep. And here's what this study had to say. 
10 million working hours in a year in the US, nearly 5 million working hours in a year in Japan, and about 1.7 million working hours in a year in Germany. The numbers on the loss of productivity for the US is packed at about $1,300 to $3,000 per employee per year. It goes without saying that lesser sleep means more people reporting sick, and therefore increased healthcare costs too. Sleep deprivation is not a good thing, never was, is not, and never will be. Whether it's for a person or for us as a society, and clearly it's also bad for the monies. On one hand, it is excessive and unbridled technology that is instrumental in what we seem to call the sleep loss pandemic. On the other hand, rather paradoxically, it's the same technology that is attempting to fix the global sleep crisis, and it attempts to do so with dozens of inventions under the umbrella of… sleep technology? Hmm. Well, sleep tech may very well work, but come to think of it, all creatures, be it animals, birds, or even plants sleep, for however many hours they are designed to. Migrating birds sleep for about an hour, and cats sleep up to 16 hours. So the point here is that 7 to 9 hours of sleep to us humans is not only free and abundant, it is our birthright. If only we could reconnect with nature. And to do that, what do we do? Well, we just turn eastwards. So let us look at some breathing exercises from the mystical east that can help us… <sighs> For the record, what the Western world calls breathing exercises is actually pranayama developed by the yogis of ancient India. Prana means life force, and yama means control of. So pranayama means control of our energies, and control of breath is the technique. The 478 method. Sit upright, eyes closed, and slightly open your lips. Make a ring of your lips and exhale completely. With your lips closed, inhale from your nostrils to the count of four. Hold your breath to the count of seven. Again, making a ring of lips, exhale to the count of eight. Repeat this about four to eight times. Bramri actually means the sound of a bumblebee, which goes something like, mm. Sit upright, eyes closed, and take a few deep breaths. With your palms on your face, use your thumbs to close your ears. Place your pointer and middle fingers across your eyes. Place your ring fingers on either side of your nostrils, and the little fingers on the corners of the lips. With your lips sealed, chant OM. Now, since your lips are closed, it's going to sound like a deep MM. Continue for about five minutes. Diaphragmatic breathing. Lie back, fold your knees with knees pointing up and heels near your hips. Place your left arm beside you and the right palm on the abdomen at the navel. Breathe in gently and deeply through your nose and exhale gently to an equal count. So if you breathe in one, two, three, four, five, six, you also breathe out one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep your focus on your navel as you practice. Practice for about five minutes. Three part breathing. This one is one part breath and three parts relaxation. Lie back and take a long and deep breath in. Breathe out slowly. As you exhale, be aware of your body, each and every part, and how it feels. Continue to repeat this, exhaling slower and slower each time. Continue till your exhalation is twice the inhalation time. Buteco breathing. Highly recommended to calm down in situations of extreme stress. Sit upright, eyes closed, and breathe normally for about a minute. Being aware of your breath, breathe in deeply through your nostrils and exhale. In the state of exhalation, pinch both your nostrils and keep them closed for as long as you can without straining yourself. In short, you are holding your breath. Release and breathe normally for a few breaths. Repeat for about three to five minutes. Box breathing or square breathing. An effective aid to calm down before sleep. Lie down comfortably or sit up with your back straight. Inhale through your nostrils to the count of four. Hold your breath to the count of four. 
and exhale through your mouth to the count of four, making sure all the air in your lungs has been exhaled. Hold your breath to the count of four and repeat as necessary. The Papworth Method This technique helps you become more mindful of your breathing. Sit upright and inhale and exhale to the count of four. Breathe either through the nose or mouth, maintaining the count, breathing methodically and rhythmically. Observe your abdomen, making sure it's the diaphragm that's being used, and listen to the sound of your breath. While these techniques are proven, don't forget the golden rules. Avoid stimulants like alcohol, caffeine, or nicotine during the evenings, have an early dinner, and do something relaxing before you head to bed. And if you're watching this video and it's past your bedtime, please keep aside your device, but only after you have liked our video and subscribed to our channel. Sleep well!